Thank you and uh, for joining us today and welcome to this event. Um, today, uh, we're going to talk about Agile HR and our guest today is Arne Dahlberg, who is a consultant. Um, and Hello. I will um, I will start to hand over for you to present yourself, Arne. Okay, hello. My name is Arne Dahlberg, uh, and I serve now as an Agile consultant before, which I've been done doing now for, let's, what is it now, two and a half years. Uh, before I was in various companies, but my main experience within HR is from Coca-Cola, which I also see a few of you participants, high Coke team. Um, and I did the, my service there for 16 years, so uh, I have a few experience there for. You know, well, HR, you, you know, all the, all the different things that can happen within people within an organization. How I came across Agile people was that I, I realized that this about Agile is quite fun, but I didn't know anything about it. And that sort of frustrated me because I realized that there's a lot of things are good are happening within the organizations. and I. I was not aware what is it. So that's how I started to get in contact with Agile people. And I did, what is it now, four different uh, trainings in within Agile people, uh, for the Agile HR, Agile leadership, Agile fundamentals, people development. Uh, and I'm not mentioning it because of the certificates, which is sometimes good to have if you want to, to, to move out in different organizations, but it also good to, and, I'm, I'm not hired by Agile people, so you can get the experience from someone other community. But uh, what I mean is it's always good to give it in depth because you really, it is about a philosophy. It's not only tools and methods, it's, it's about philosophy and, and you need to, to invest a little bit of time. That's what I did at least. Yeah, just a few mention on the companies, Otto is about stain, uh, stainless steel, well, Coca-Cola, you know, ISS about cleaning and service facility, Continental is tires, Maltevigne electronics, and last Berjab and Bonadam are, 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 are private companies within the private sector. And then right now I have an assignment with the Swedish Maritime Administration in Swedish Sjöfartsverket that covers boats and, and ships and in, the, in the maritime environment. So enough about me, um, over to you, Ingela. Yes. Um, do I show the right screen now? Because it's, are you, now you, there's a B on me on the screen, but I think mm -hmm. we need to go to the, to the next slide. Yes. Why I go in Aja? So yeah. I think, yeah, that yeah. one. So a lot of companies uh, want to uh, change um, because change is happening um, more rapidly than ever before. And I think that uh, we felt when when Corona came or the uh, pandemic that um, it did not only change uh, slowly, but it was really a huge uh, change in society and, and it's escalating all the time. And uh, in Agile people, we believe that the companies that will be the most successful are the ones that are able to move and learn faster than their competition. Uh, and it's really about, in the end, becoming a learning organization. It's to understand your customers, it is to understand uh, your employees, and it is to also to understand other stakeholders. And, and doing this, adapting the agile mindset and, and the methods, uh, yes, we become flexible and closer and quicker. But another answer to that is also around what I discovered, and I guess you all discovered that you as a person, but also your, 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 your team members, your, your employees, people are quite, people want so different things. They want to do mountain climbing the other, one day and the next day they can do the work. Uh, just one, I can share one of the stories from, from one of the companies I'm helping. We were so proud because we had a, a, an incentive program with money coming in. And we said proudly that it comes after three years of employment. And I, I look the employee in the eyes and I just could see three years. I'm not sure I'm going to live after three years. So the perspective 
at least for 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 some more traditional companies, we we need to understand that uh, it's things are going fast, and three years is it's a lifetime. And it's really to adapt and understand the mindset and not implementing just agile work methods. So uh, what does this mean for HR? Uh, we all know that we want to be in HR. Our main uh, focus is many times to be an attractive uh, employer. And to be an attractive employer, uh, we need to have engaged and motivated employees. And people want to be seen for who they are and be treated accordingly, not to be seen as an individual. And one view of that is, is sometimes HR, we try to transform the initiatives to, to, to sort of a package that that fits all and and you that's really hard nowadays because people don't want to see us just a, a one brick in the in the whole wall they want to to see us sarah mohammed or lisa or wherever and it's really the individual much more than mm. just a brick in the yeah in, in the whole mm. so to to be this attractive employer today you really need to have a great employee experience based on the individual needs so today you cannot say uh, this is a good career development for your employees, because if they have other interests, they might want to switch to uh, another profession or, or uh, doing something totally different. Uh, and you need to understand what they want to do and how to do it. And it's about co-creating the employee experience. Uh, uh... And, and this is tricky, especially for the ones of, of you and us that also experience in the large organizations where there are a lot of stakeholders might have an interest in the view of the organization or the, the picture. But we really need to go in there and realize that people are don't, they don't really listen to the more official channels. They, they listen to the real ones. So, so and this we did at, at Coca-Cola, the very successful, I would say, before we know, knew that this was agile and mindset, that was go let the employees talk, let the employees be, share their stories on, on events or, or, or Christmas parties. We had like heroes of the, of the day that they shared their story because it's far more genuine than any company product. So if, if your HR department are, are um, working quite traditional, um, it's a lot of change that you need to do. Uh, and it's not that you want to stop do everything that you have done before, but is doing less of these traditional um, HR um, skills or like we used to do uh, develop policies we used to establish uh, working rules and standards but today we need to be more uh, we need to be able to support flexibility uh, hr is sometimes seen like they um, block everything so we need to work with speed and we need to collaborate much more with the rest of the organization and to understand the needs. Uh, so we don't, we cannot continue to have this parent view and tell our employee what is good for them or for our managers, you need to learn this. Um, it needs to be the other way around. Uh, and one way to view this that I learned and I have started to learn is yeah, you see all the different things on the slide here, but start digging in what you have in front of you. Uh, start with the, with the, with the, with the work that you already are doing, and and have another thought. Again, is uh, yeah, some of you have done the training, so you know what I'm talking about. It's the philosophy. What kind of can we move this in a more agile way? Can I involve people in doing this work? Why should I? put the ad out on a new recruitment, maybe the team can do that uh, and co-create it. Can we do something new around it? It's, it's 
often, if you even even in salary departments, and uh, I would say the salary departments are, are the most best uh, teams to start to do work agile, since they know quite know well the process, but when we talk about improvement, there are a lot of things we can learn from the industry on continuous improvement, etc. And that we can do. Again, uh, I'm so proud of the uh, service team and payroll team we had at Coke that start doing this again before they know, knew that they were doing, but they, they had like daily stand-ups in the mornings just to check what is important and what that gave a much more feeling of speed, a much more feeling of accountability because we did it quite easy, 15 minutes every morning. In Agile, we know it's part of Scrum. We didn't know that, but it worked. Mm -hmm. uh, mm. Yeah, I think that many working in traditional uh, HR departments, they kind of feel that uh, when you work, when they have been the most successful is really when they have worked uh, really close to the organization. So, so they, as you describe it, uh, they have been working agile without really having the vocabulary for it. But I think traditionally in HR, we have been working with big uh, projects where we have, uh, we, we do everything and then we kind of launch uh, a new performance review process, a new recruiting process or whatever. Um, and in agile organization, um, you work small, you start, you experiment, you try uh, and you, you, you see that it doesn't always work to have this one size fits all because the needs in one department might be totally different in others. So you need to have small, steady, high performing teams that really understand the organization. And that is a little bit what you described there, uh, Anna. So you need to involve your uh, employees. Um, <clears throat> You need to make sure that you can help them to be the best and to be when they are the best, they ultimately become these uh, high performers. And, and one question that you can know, well, there are several questions here on, on the on the on the slide. Uh, but uh, one experience I had with one team that was actually about to be uh, downsized. Uh, Sometimes I think that sometimes in, in the handbook we, we often describe uh, companies moving up, organizations building really grower, but there are sometimes quite often people, organizations uh, moving down. Um, and, and I don't know about you, but sometimes HR people tend to get very excited in these kind of sessions and, and, and you really need to, of course, need to, to change a bit of you there and start to look individuals because there are money involved, the careers, what they're gonna do, kids, family, etc. So what, what? And it's I'm not gonna tell how to do that successful because it's always every situation is unique. But I remember what one team that they were quite skilled serving with with. Um, uh, navigation screens in, in in the far side of the country and and we were about to move that office so and people would not commute so long so 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 they will have to leave however when we start to ask questions and pose questions what strengths you have and we really showed what kind of competencies the team had together i could almost feel that the proudness rise in that room so so Agile is not only about growing up. Agile is really something you can use when, when you have a bit tricky situations, when companies are moving down. And we have, um, the question you need to ask yourself, is your HR practice really focused on people or on processes? And we have given a few examples to illustrate that one size does not fit all at all. And here you can see what I discovered about different people you have in your team or in the organization. Yes, it might say uh, specialist purchaser or, or educated engineer here, but there are also about a lot of spare time activities that I might share. It's really about something else. In, in the life that is important, 
and and if, if you start to address those kind of feelings in the teamwork in the project you get a lot of things happening uh, and then the traditional roles might be that the controller will by sorry if your financial background is, is controlling uh, is the most uh, joyful and eventful guy the hr person might be the uh, shy and, and very you never know so so don't prejudice sorry if i did uh, start to use the individual skills in 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 the team that you have mm. Uh, and one way to see it is um, uh, to really map your employee journey. Um, and I think, um, I think a lot of HR departments really have started to look at different uh, groups, like you have newly educated, you have professionals, and you have uh, highly skilled expertise. Um, so you know that when you talk to these different uh, target groups, you need to have uh, different messages. So I think we HR is quite good when it comes to uh, branding and, and, and in the recruitment uh, phase. You do understand there are different audiences with different goals and, and so on, but maybe um, you need to do this further. So uh, you need to establish um, look at your different journey steps of your employee um, employee journey so it's attracting recruiting uh, onboarding engage develop performing reward and and also don't forget how you exit and i think many hr departments they they, they do understand this uh, different steps in the journeys uh, but you also need to understand what what are the goals and needs of my audience? What are the touch point? Uh, what do, what do we do in the organization? What are the barriers and what are the enablers? And 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 when you start to work with this, uh, you get much more or a better understanding of the organization and and the different people and the different departments. And and again, I'm not gonna, not meaning to repeat what Ingela is saying, but again, try to see what kind of, of forums can you can we create? What kind of uh, meetings can we create out of this? Uh, to sit uh, on your own and work out the perfect policy is not really gonna work. Of course, we should understand that people also have their their other things to do. However, use volunteering put up an ad and say, hey, I'm going to do a, a new scheme of performance management. Can we, someone want to join? Sometimes we, at least in traditional companies, are quite scared of doing that. But why? It could be great ideas coming up from, from anybody. So so let, let's go out and try. Yeah. And you don't need to do all steps. You can do one step at a time, uh, really. So, and now we're kind of moving into what we're really going to talk about uh, today. We just first wanted to give you a background uh, in uh, Agile HR. And uh, um, the, the, the journey of uh, your journey often starts with you uh, attending a, um, a training somehow, and you get new knowledge, you get inspirations you want to go to your office and um, then you discover that not everyone is on the same table as you or the same page um, and then you start thinking where do i start how can i be success successful with this and the question then is really how hard can it be and then uh, Arne, you have the answer to that no, I don't have the answer to that, but I can at least <laughs> see uh, what I did. And I hopefully, Ingela, that we, we can have and also uh, can have a bit of a conversation later on with the full team attending today mm -hmm. uh, about different experiences. So, so, but I will share a few um, examples from my world. And, and uh, again, this is my, my uh, experience. And, and, and uh, actually, I'm going to share a bit of a, 
something that didn't really work well. Uh, at least when I listen to some kind of these kind of seminars, everything is so perfect and shiny and, and, and everybody knows, no, it's not. So I'm going to share a few downs, but I will also share a few ups in, 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 in from my uh, time. Uh, I just want to show one example of the reality I've met during the, these two and a half years. This is an icebreaker in Sunset. And I was so happy to, to meet an icebreaker in reality. Normally, we use icebreakers in, in meetings to, uh, to ease up the, the, the thing. Uh, this is a real one. And uh, it's one of my uh, at a Swedish maritime organization. And it can actually break 1.8 meters of ice up in the Baltic Sea, or actually even up in the Arctic. But again, the team here is great, and the team also have their challenges and these kind of things. So it's people, even at an icebreaker, need some kind of support. Okay, just wanted to share a bit of that. I'm very proud. Okay, this is an, uh, one example when I didn't really go well. This team, we had five great HR professionals, and they were handling an important initiative for the organization. So the attention was there, absolutely. And this was about uh, sort of a downsizing project. I can so the people. It's not the same as I talked before. This was quite bigger, involved 160 employees that were sadly needed to leave or change. Uh, but it needed to be really planned well. So we organized our work in in three week sprints. So instead of having the full project PPS planning, I just that was my role as an agile coach. I said, well great that you have done this long time uh, project planning but let's just focus what are you going to do in the upcoming three weeks and i wouldn't say it went perfect from beginning sometimes people in this kind of situation started to talk about the long-term goals so my role was to okay great but what what is actually happening coming this week this monday next monday and we used uh, Mural. If you haven't used Mural, please do it. It's great because this was during the COVID time, so we couldn't really meet physical. And we had review every third week with our managers coming in and so So everything was going great. I was so happy. I said, hey, I learned the new tools. It's working. But then suddenly, I remember during a review, everything started to crash. I heard worry. I heard anxiety, I heard fear from this great kind of people. I said, what is happening? And I was, uh, they were start worrying. And I said, what, what is this? So I tried to save the, the meeting the way I thought could be going to say, hey, what is happening? Uh, and I tried to address it in, in, in like, yeah, you know, uh, okay, there's a problem. Let's put it up on the, on the list here and who can start thinking of it. So. We ended the meeting in some kind of ordered way, uh, but I, I kept on thinking, what happened really? So, and that's why really we have this seminar today because I called HR people. Hey, uh, Pia Maria, it was an uh, answer that I found time and said, what, what happened? So we don't know exactly, but what I think is what I did wrong was in my ambition to do a lot of things during the review, review of the three weeks, I also started to ask about retrospective questions, like how did the team work? How was it in the groups? Because I thought it would be good for the managers to hear, because my view was that we had a good session, was to hear that. And then I got really about, uh, no, 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 you can never mix managers and employees in a res retrospective. It's not gonna work because this was in a quite large, organization when managers are involved the people will start to think about their careers people will start to, to to sort of make sure that they don't do anything wrong so this it, you can only well that was the idea at least from the theory you can only do a great res retrospective in, in in a safe room and safe is is certainly when you leave the hierarchy out and if you have a hierarchy in the company you cannot really rule it out so so you can only do retrospective with the team, not with a full uh, stakeholder meeting, which of course is, if you read Scrum thoroughly, you would have discovered that for any. So that was uh, a learning for me. Next session went far better because I, I 
focused it on the team, etc. This was another example, and, and now it's gonna, it went a little bit better. Uh, so this organization had grown. It was a, a public company, government body, but still it had grown due to, to new tasks that the government had put on it. So they had grown from 20 to 100 employees. However, the managers in the, in the organization were more or less the same. And they agreed on a change journey. And so, because we all realized that we need to change uh, the organization now when we are growing. So what we did was uh, um, establish a platform five years from now, where are we now? What have we done? And to establish that platform, sorry, I, I imposed that let's do it a sprint. Let's do it in uh, having every follow-up uh, almost daily, 15 minutes to see that we're actually moving. I know that you're busy. And they agreed on that. And they, they had, it was quite fun for them. I realized that to just call in and say what they have done. And then we put it up on a Kanban board. Sorry if, if, not, if you all haven't really this terminology, but it's just to, to Google or join any courses. But Kanban is a great way to, to sort of sort the ideas and then start to pick what are you actually moving forward. But the, the, the good thing in there is I wanted to share is sometimes I realized, okay, this was only managers. Shall we now involve employees in doing this change, which by the philosophy should be natural. Uh, but I realized no, the managers, they are so engaged. So let them continue a little bit more before we start to move in, uh, involve. Because they, they, uh, they really needed to feel that they had uh, this change. So you need to, I, I at least find that balance a bit tricky, but I wanted to say, no, let's wait a bit before we do that, because they are not really agreed on where we're going. And it went really well. And it's, it is going well, this organizational change. And, and now we are actually moving into to teams to, to start to discuss the same topic. And another example, as an agile coach, I, you discovered, I discovered that it's not always people questions that people ask to, can you help us with? Uh, this was another company and they are doing selling high technological components for automation. And they were really great about selling their components. It has been going so well and the business is going well, but now they were looking out to move from selling things to, to a more project oriented approach to be more consultant to their customers. And the question was, can you help us move in this organizational change? So could we move from selling to uh, supporting, uh, selling and supporting products to helping customers with their problems was actually the question. And I don't know anything about the products and how, what they actually are doing. I can understand that the uh, technical components are important. So they are talking about that and they're so happy. But when they, but the change in moving from, let's say, a more uh, reactive, if, my, if I might say so, selling to a more proactive, I, I definitely think that I, I, as an agile, could help, agile coach could help them moving that. So we're now taking on board two new uh, products and, and the, the, we are working in sprints. We have my, done that now four, four sprints uh, and the whole company is so involved in the new future and they're not at all discussing can we really work in project and be more consultant. It's more like, ah, how can we help that customer the problems? So still, I don't know exactly what the components do, but I definitely understand the change that the, the, they are going through and their employees and the teams are going through. Uh, so yes, don't be afraid of joining, doing things that might not be traditional HR. This might be a more selling coach, but it works so well. Mm -hmm. so that was a little bit our uh, main message today that we don't need always to make things very complicated so even if you as an owner is uh, independent consultant who works on different tasks um, you can still um, you can still start working agile and you can start in the small uh, um, doing small tasks into larger projects 
Um, I see that we have some people online who I think work in um, agile HR departments. Uh, is there anyone who would like to add something? How you start working agile? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, right. Then we were thinking that uh, we would start uh, <clears throat> to do uh, little uh, that we could work in groups in breakout rooms. Um, so we were thinking about um, that you, <clears throat> if you work in a company and you were going to implement Agile in your HR department, where would you start? Um, and um, um, I don't know, uh, it would be great if we could have some feedback from the audience, if you would like to participate or if you just want us to ask uh, questions. Yeah. Okay, anyone has any questions to Anna? Jonas. I just enabled my cam so I could see you. Uh, <laughs> the question I could have on the fly on it is that for me, I've been working in HR. HR is huge, uh, mm -hmm. depending on the size of the company. And I think you have to take that into consideration before mm -hmm. you start with the implementation of Agile. Mm -hmm. The benefits I can share from this part is that Agile is so familiar by so many, so it's not difficult to implement in HR as well. Hmm. I've done it so many years for software and for them it's of course today, but Agile has um, reached HR and is popular there among those people as well. Hmm. That's my take on it. Do you agree on it? I definitely would agree. I, I, I have never come across an HR team that is not interested in the future, what is moving. So the Agile was definitely on, 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 on the map for, for many years. But I was I was must just sharing that I sort of read about it, but I I never really took my time to to this, to get, get into deep what it was before now. And that I, I can only feel sorry for that. But however, I'm really enjoying it and I agree with you. Uh, the HR team are normally into the future, but I can also feel that they sometimes, or we, if I say so, are a bit struggling because, yeah, my IT. If, if you're looking on larger organization that that is not have done the whole journey, you might hear the same thing from the IT team. You might hear some, maybe the CEO or the head of the organization might say, but not the full organization. And 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 that's what I mean is you can always start in your own at least and then suddenly you the, the the word will be spread and hey what are you doing guys it seems like you're doing something fun can we join sales team normally they will jump on anything that you propose because they they will love this my my tiffany from implementing agile in hr was that start asking people what they need instead of thinking yourself of what they need ask them mm -hmm. And yeah. I think that really. is really the major change from in traditional HR department because I think it was Lucy Williams from uh, Disruptive HR who, who started where I saw it first, but she, she, she says that you have this parental view. Uh, so you kind of think this is good for the employees, this is good for the managers to learn. And that is something I really think they need to think uh, differently on. Mm. Mm. Any other or in the audience who has any questions or would like to add something? Hi, hi this is Pankaj. 
Hi. Hi. Um, so I had a couple of uh, points to discuss. Uh, mm -hmm. The second one being more like a question. So you, uh, uh, first thing is um, to implement Agile HR. Um, um, my thought process was that it would be a good start to actually have the head of HR kind of be part of the Agile Center of Excellence, perhaps. Um, and would like to know Arnie's thoughts on that. Um, and the second question is uh, more around uh, something that caught my attention where you said value stream HR and made a lot of sense. So, mm -hmm. uh, and, and coming from the thought process of the value stream mapping. So if we do identify two or three value streams to start off or kick off um, the organizational transformation, you know, and, and uh, then we start forming uh, teams around them. So how do you see the structure of the HR team in that case when we say along the value stream? Um, do we have something similar uh, in your mind? Uh, you know, the similar hierarchical structure in the HRs uh, because they're aligned along the, along the value stream. So any thoughts on that would be helpful. Uh, thank you, Pancha. Great questions or thinkings. What, what I came across is Yes, of course, the, the HR leader or director you need, if, if that is your boss, you need to, to sort of discuss it. And the problem at least I have faced is that sometimes you might be agree with your, your boss, but then you're part of a large organization that is international and, and, and let's, and I can also understand that sometimes they have just moved from old HR to a more transactional HR with, with, with the different, uh, you know, the, the, all the, uh, transaction HR, and then suddenly you start to say, hey, yeah, but guys, this is really not really wrong. You need to move into more agile. You need to understand that change is also taking time in, in large organizations. So, so yes, I would agree to line up with your, your, your leader, and, but don't wait for the rest of the organization. That's more my message, and, and, and that's what I've done in, in some of the organizations. Just, okay, let's move into this team. And, and then you can also, st even if you're even larger than that, you can start to say, okay, about your question or thinking about value stream. Yeah, I mean, if you want to do start with sales, why not? Or start with, with logistics or whatever. Normally you have great HR partners there that, that want to, and I would, I would go for, for more volunteering. Who wants to, who wants to, to go and, and, and use the, the first, what do you call it? The first 20% that really wants to change instead of you try to, to, to move the last ones. I don't know if that is, but that's my, my comments more when you post the, the, the questions like that. Yeah, I know. Thank you very much. That uh, does give me more of a perspective that it shouldn't just, uh, we shouldn't just wait for a top down thing to happen, no. but uh, incremental transformation can also start at the same time from anywhere. And that's what you were referring to as the yeah. first part of uh, yeah. that. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. But, but I also think it's very important that the HR understands the value streams of their processes and they are not used to working that way. Uh, and, and uh, you know, if you're going to do a recruitment for a department, you can start working agile and really close to the uh, organization in that department without all HR going agile. Yeah. Yeah. Got it. Mm. Um, any other questions or reflections from the audience? I don't know, Annika, if you still are there, but I know that you work quite uh, <laughs> agile. If you would like to add something, you mm. are welcome. Um, I think what, what you discuss is kind of agile HR for larger uh, organizations uh, we are a small organization mm -hmm. you know we are 65 people mm -hmm. um, and we didn't start with working agile but I think we figured out along the way that we do work agile um, mm -hmm. we are focuses uh, focused on the individuals uh, I work in consultancy uh, they are highly attractive in these days uh, hard to get, uh, and we know that we have to find out what really attracts uh, the different uh, competences and consultants, mm. and that one size does not fit all. <laughs> mm. 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 Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. 
it's a small organization, but I, I, um, I really like the way Annika was uh, attending one of our meetups, but I really like the way you described uh, how you see the individuals in your organization. Yes, but we also make them you know, responsible for how they would like to be, for example, followed up uh, mm -hmm. in how to develop their competencies or in um, uh, other kind of skills or uh, different uh, assignments. Mm -hmm. They have to help us be a good uh, leaders or, or an organization for them as well. Mm -hmm. And they are also part of HR. I have the title, but we all work in HR. <laughs> I'm get so curious. How 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 far how long have you been working with with that company? I've been there for uh, seven years. Oh, so you have seen really this? Yes. Yeah. Uh, and it was really exciting for me to start there because my uh, prior position was an HR director in a telecom company. Um, and I used to get all the, you know, um, troubles uh, from the different uh, leaders who wanted me to solve their problems with their employees or employees who want to get rid of their manager. <laughs> you know, that's kind of different way to, to work, even though I could solve some of those uh, issues. It's, um, it's not like they are uh, applauding you when you enter the room. Um, and then I came to Miles and I see that, you know, I work with people that actually want help. Um, they come because they have a, a vision or a goal, something they want to accomplish, which is kind of different, of course. Um, it's more fun to work with people who, who wants to go somewhere um, instead of telling them that you have to go this way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I have no choice. <laughs> So, yeah, and we are we are we're serious about you know telling them our expectations during the recruitment process as well. Mm. And yeah. I just let me. Uh, I, I when you describe this, Annick, I I realized that I had a, an assignment with with the uh, that is doing stainless steel had been for three hundred years in in, the, in this mill with you know traditional unions and everything. But yeah, you, you, I could really feel the same thing when you move into teams and the machines that they were almost individuals themselves and our team members that really could know how to sort of speak with the machines and handle them and, and develop them. And I realized these guys don't, or girls don't need to be told. They, they are our consultants in-house. So I can see the similar things. And, and just imagine that some of our tools were made for, for workers that were not yeah more or less drinking all the time i just realized this is not going to work we need to change which they mm. are doing we i think we realized that people get really good at what they uh, are interested in mm. or engaged in so we don't we don't decide where they need to develop they decide mm. uh, where they would like to go and we support that in every way we can Mm. Great, thanks. Yes, thank you. Mm. Right, anyone else uh, have something they would like to add? I see people start to drop off. Uh, the last comment from someone? No? Then I say thank you to Arno who joined us for just uh, sharing your experience uh, is great um, and uh, we will probably see you around uh, again maybe in another set of in, in a meetup yeah so thanks everyone for today and um, we will come back uh, next month with a new uh, stories from reality thank you thank all you. thank you Johnny. thank you bye-bye